بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ حمد شاکرین صلاۃ وسلام علی سید المرسلین سیدنا محمد و علی علیہ و صاحبہ اجمعین As promised last week, we will be starting, insha'Allah ta'ala, al-Risalat al-Qushayriya, one of the earliest manuals uh, regarding what is known today as a tasawwuf, meaning purification of the heart, even though the terms can be disputed. Some people refer to this as, as tazkiyah, a tazkiyah purification of the heart also. But the best definition is the one supplied and taught to us by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam an ta'abud Allah ka'annaka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yaraq that you worship Allah as if you observe him and if you do not observe him then know that he observes you this is the essence of the teaching of Al-Ihsan which is the third pillar of the religion there being four pillars taught uh, to us by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam the first one being Islam the second being Ihsan, uh, Iman the third one being Ihsan and the fourth one being Ashratu Sa'a knowing the signs of the end of times with regard to this one Al-Ihsan which is really the inward of an individual the personal relationship an individual has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the development of that relationship which is the essence of our faith that a person from his birth and from his upbringing he has a connection with his creator how does one develop that connection this work was written for that and the introduction of the work concentrates on two things one is firstly mentioning the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the khutbah in the beginning of the work Al-Imam Al-Qushayri rahimallahu ta'ala uh, whose name by the way is Abdul Karim bin Hawazin rahimallahu ta'ala who was from the early generation of Muslims just after the period of As-Salaf Salihun prior to the time of Al-Imam Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali rahimallahu ta'ala he mentions the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after in the khutbah in the introduction mentioning the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions that the early Sufis the early Sufi guides many of them had passed away and how he expresses this he said that the realized people of this ta'ifa I mean this group of people that were known as the Sufis, most of them had in Qarada, meaning they had gone with the times. Aktharum, majority of them, only a few remained. Walam yabqa fi zamanina hadha min hadhi ta'ifati illa atharuhum. Nothing remains of this group in our times except their remnants. So he was saying this in the first, after the first 300 years of Islam, after the period of a Salaf Salihun that only the remnants remain. So if this was the case in the time of Al-Imam Al-Qushayri rahimallahu ta'ala, imagine our times where every individual claims to be a master of this path, but yet uh, many of them do not follow the Sharia or have the correct beliefs. And this is what something Al-Imam Al-Qushayri rahimallahu ta'ala points out. He states, حَصَلَتِ الْفَتْرَةُ فِي الطَّرِيقَةِ لا بل اندرست الطريقة بالحقيقة that the طريقة meaning the way of purification of the heart and knowing الإحسان meaning attaining مقام الإحسان attaining this مقام which is the purpose to know Allah سبحانه وتعالى this reality meaning uh, amongst the people who claim the pathway has finished اندرست but of course, even though he mentions this, this does not mean that a select group of people will always remain who maintain this maqam al-ihsan. A select group of people in every age <coughs> up to the time of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and even after Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam <coughs> when there will be a group of people who 
will say la ilaha illallah meaning and it will save them saying la ilaha illallah because they will have a form of ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'rifah meaning worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we observe him now the fact that we do not observe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our eyes does not mean that we cannot observe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our hearts and our minds meaning and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu means that you observe him with your hearts and your minds in this world in the akhirah you have the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is one of the beliefs of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah so likewise he mentions Mada'a shuyukh al-lazina kana lahum ihtida those shuyukh that were the source of guidance they have transpired those shuyukh that were a source of guidance وَقَلَّ أَشَبَابُ الَّذِينَ كَانَ لَهُمْ بِسِيرَتِهِمْ وَسُنَّتِهِمْ اِقْتِدَاءٌ And likewise the youth that were followed, meaning young men who would devote themselves to ibadah. The ibadah was not only the outward ibadah, it was also the inward ibadah of the heart, meaning purifying the heart of a riya, ostentation. Like I mentioned that if someone prays Qiyamul Layl in the masjid, so for everyone to see, then there is a sha'iba, meaning a doubt of riya entering his heart. So there was also purification of the heart inwardly, because once a person purifies the heart inwardly, that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is known as a taqarrub Allah, is strengthened. And the mushahada, the person observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mind and with his heart is increased. This is what is known as ma'rifah. This is what they mean by sir. When they say quddisa sirruhu, may his, may his secret be purified, meaning his ruh be purified. What is this sir? The sir is the, the connection of the person with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it referred to? Meaning the ruh has the connection, but why is it referred to as sir? Because the world does not observe it. Because it is not observable, it is between the abd and his Lord, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This taqarrub, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is developed from a young age a person develops throughout their life and people like Al Imam Abdul Karim Al Qushayri rahimallahu ta'ala they left these works for people to read after them meaning works like Kashful Mahjub, works like Ihya Ulum al Deen, works like Qutul Qulub of Abu Talib al Makki and many other these are the works of the earlier generations but then the later generations left many works also these works a person reads them they find a blueprint a manual as to how to develop their closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to develop their personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all their affairs in every little thing this is why the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that if you seek help seek help from Allah alone even if you need a shoelace a strap of the shoe then seek that strap meaning something meager like a strap seek that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does that entail a taqarrub a closeness that the abd the servant observes the musabib al-asbab the one who creates the asbab and does not observe the asbab in every little thing in every small thing this is a strong connection between the abd and with his lord so he states zal al warau wa tuwiya bisatuh warau remember um warau is observing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which is halal and haram he says zal al warau that warau is gone in one hadith it mentions that in ashratu sa'a the end of times the warau will become tasannu'an a tasannu' is pretentious behavior and this was the behavior that Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu condemned when he saw, observed a man praying and was the man was contriving to be humble in his salah Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu had what they call a durra which is a, a small stick and struck the man and said the humility is in the heart not in the body meaning the wara observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is firstly an inward state that a person when alone what is his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when alone 
with no people around. Developing this is is what is known as maqamul ihsan. So he states, وَاشْتَدَّ الطَّمَعُ وَقَوِيَ رِبَاطُهُ That greed increased. That people became greedy. وَقَوِيَ رِبَاطُهُ فَارْتَحَلَ عَنِ الْقُلُوبِ حُرْمَةُ الشَّرِيعَةِ this introduction is important to the entire book that the hurmatu sharia the sanctity of the sharia went away first that the sharia why does a person stick to the sharia because of his observance of the one who has revealed the sharia not out of a piety because of the one commanding meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one prohibiting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he said the sanctity of the sharia disappeared فَعَدُّ قِلَّةَ الْمُبَالَاتِ بِالدِّينِ أَوْ ثَقَ ذَرِيعَةٍ That they considered uh, this قِلَّةَ uh, الْمُبَالَاتِ and none concern, meaning no concern with the religion as the best way to, to gaining whatever they wanted to gain. Meaning not grasping unto what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. وَرَفَضُوا التَّمْيِيزَ بَيْنَ الْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ That people in his time, they refused to make a distinction between al-halal and al-haram. وَدَانُوا بِتَرْكِ الْإِحْتِرَامِ وَطَرْحِ الْإِحْتِشَامِ That what they did is they abandoned sanctity, ihtiram of things, and likewise what is known as al-ihtisham, which is modesty. They abandoned modesty. Now, if that was in that time, imagine our times in Akhiru Zaman, where we live on the threshold of the major Ashratu Sa'a, that people have made a mockery of the Sharia, that many of the Ashratu Sa'a are occurring in our times, where men will marry men, and Nikahu Rajuli Ar Rajula, which has occurred, but also in the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not be surprised in, in the near future if it's not law passed that imams and clerics in the masjid they must perform the nikah of two men the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned regarding this or people who permit alcohol giving it different names in the akhir zaman why is the fit and tribulation something that comes on the hearts as was mentioned in the hadith uh, that it comes on tu'arad al-fitan wa al qulubi that the fit and tribulations they are presented on the heart udan udan Kalhasir, like a mat that is made from uh, straws. You draw, you place one straw with another straw until it finally becomes a mat. The tribulations shall come on the heart one after the other. So if a person does not involve himself with tazkiyah, dhikrullah and tazkiyah, purification of the heart, knowing the elements of the heart and how to develop his, the taqarrub to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will happen? The hadith states, that his heart will become like a container that contains, that is overturned, a container that is tilting, which contains no good in the end of times. So in the, in the Akhir Zaman, the person is in need of tazkiyah, purifying the heart, knowing the knowledge of a tazkiyah. So he states, ibadat." They made light of performing ibadat. I mean, this does not only refer to fard, even though tarku salah, abandoning salah is one of the major ashratu sa'a, this also refers to making istighfaf of acts of ibadah like nawafil, meaning uh, people performing a nawafil or dua, making istighfaf, uh, mockery of small things like dua, nawafil, adhkar, all these things are abandoned, meaning people abandon extra acts of worship leaving those extra acts of worship or reading awrad, litanies or reading and reciting the Qur'an in abundance all of, all of these different things he states وَاسْتَهَانُوا بِالصَّوْمِ salawat and they abandon the fast and salawat meaning fasting in the month of Ramadan and the salawat the prayers istahanu. they made light of this وَرَقَضُوا فِي مَيْدَانِ الْغَفَلَاتِ they ran in places of negligence meaning imagine the negligence uh, people are indulging in the sir the meaning of the sir is a man when he is engrossed in dhikrullah 
that he feels the halawatul iman, the sweetness of faith, this is a sir. Meaning outwardly the person could be sitting there with the sibha, just reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sitting alone at home, but he has the sweetness of iman, halawatul iman, that his heart does not, his soul does not tempt him to shahwat, to ghafalat. Shahwat is desires, ghafalat is anything that takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this sir, how does a person develop this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is why such people, if they are alone, they do not feel alone. If they are isolated from the makhluk, they, they are not isolated because they are with their Lord, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sir, meaning the secret that they developed. Uh, some are gifted this, like a person with abundant intellect can be given intellect. A, a mohiba gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala others will develop the intellect likewise some people are given the gift of having this taqarrub to Allah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others need to develop the taqarrub meaning some are given this because they avoid haram muharramat they avoid anything which is a hijab a, a barrier between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they gain a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Al-Imam Al-Qushayri rahimallahu ta'ala says وَرَكَنُوا إِلَى إِتِّبَاعِ الشَّهَوَاتِ they, uh, they inclined to إِتِّبَاعِ الشَّهَوَاتِ following their desires وَقِلَّةِ الْمُبَالَاتِ بِطَعَاتِ الْمَحْذُورَاتِ and they gave no importance to whatever mahdhurat meaning things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited they gave no important to, importance to this in one journey when I travelled to Hama, the city of Hama, I went with some uh, people from a Sheikh Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi Masjid. When we went, on the way there was a young man who was smoking, who had cigarettes. Now, some of the people wanted to prohibit him from smoking. I also wanted to prohibit him from smoking. But my method differed from their method. I observed that their method was more in tune with the correct method which I adopted after, which was telling him that these cigarettes, why are they bad for you? They are bad for you because they keep you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not emphasizing other things. That the fact that an action removes you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once a person has tasted the halawatul iman, the sweetness of faith, and tum'anina of dhikr, meaning the satisfaction attained from dhikrullah, once they have tasted this, they will know whatever takes me away from this sweetness is bad. And th this is the parameter of sharia, aqidah and sharia, meaning anything which is a false creed, or the sharia and in engrossing oneself in shahawat, these things, why are these things bad? These things are bad because they take me away from halawatul iman, sweetness of faith, and tum'anina, my satisfaction of the heart which I feel when I do dhikrullah, which the entire world today is looking for. If you sold tum'anina in bottles, people would buy tum'anina from the stores. But tum'anina is found in dhikrullah, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though a person may do dhikrullah, there are two things that I will mention before finishing for this week. One is that a person sometimes does dhikrullah and they do not feel the tum'anina, they think that this is just placing effort without any results. The answer is that that person may be doing an action by which he is being punished by not having tum'anina. An action, sometimes those actions may not be those things which are explicitly haram. They can even be things which are makru or even ghafalat, acts of negligence by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep that person, meaning a barrier in the heart of that person by which he has no tum'anina. Secondly, sometimes a person may stop doing those particular actions, but the satisfaction of the heart is not attained straight away. And the person, because of qillatul sabr, a lack of patience, uh, loses his patience and stops doing the good actions that he is doing. This is caused because the person does not realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is changing his situation subtly and slowly. 
subtly, I mean, this is why one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Latif. Subtly and slowly. The situation of the person is changing. So the person, man ajjala shay'an, uqiba hirmani, uqiba bihirmanihi, whoever hastens something, uh, rushes something, he's punished by not being given that thing at all. So sometimes a person, when he does dhikrullah, he may not feel the halawatul iman. This is because of something he's doing. Once he abandons that thing, attaining the halawatul iman and his situation of stopping certain sins and ghafalat and shahwat, negligent acts and desires, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change his situation slowly as long as he is always beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us close to him. At-taqarrub illallah, which is the goal of our lives, which can never be attained without correct belief and without sharia. Without Islam and iman, you can never have ihsan. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam amah wa ahluh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam amah wa ahluh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam amah wa ahluh. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.